Good afternoon and welcome to Body Slam Your Ears, sponsored by the NYC Demon Diva YouTube page. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. I am Steve Fall, and with me, of course, is the Roman Reigns whisper herself, Isa. <laughs> Isa, how you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry I've been MIA for a few days. You know, I have this family visiting in town, but I'm here today. We, we got a lot to talk about. Oh, do we ever? Let's talk about Elimination Chamber. If there's time for more, there'll be more. But Chamber needs to be discussed between me and you. Brock Lesnar, your beastie, is the new WWE champion. During the matchup, yeah. though, where he won the belt, Bobby Lashley got a buckle bomb thrown in his face, and they took him out of the match. Everyone thought this is the way to keep Bobby Lashley safe from getting pinned, but it turns out he actually is injured. He's out for four months. The poor guy's going to miss WrestleMania. That sucks. Yeah, it does. It does suck because I, I do think that Bobby Lashley did a lot, especially throughout the pandemic era. Um, you know, his, his title reigns. They could have been a little bit better, especially the second one. But, I, I mean, what the dirt sheets are reporting is that he got hurt at the Rumble. So this decision makes sense. I saw a lot of people saying, well, why put the belt back on him, this and that? If he got hurt at the Royal Rumble, they probably had to change all the plans on the fly. You mm -hmm. know, but I just hope for a fast recovery. And I got to say, I give him credit for the way they took him out because you did protect him. And when he comes back, you can insert him into the WWE title picture or any main event picture for that for that matter because he was never pinned. Yeah, and he never technically lost the belt. So technically his storyline is, hey, I'm still the champ in my eyes because you know what he pinned me. So right. I, I like it. I like it for him. Though Austin Theory died in front of our eyes being F5 oh off God, the top of an elimination pod. chamber pod. And at that the same time... everything. Everything. I loved it. But very interesting, though. I, I have read some random stories where that spot wasn't planned. But, like, really? you're, telling me, you're telling me that there was no plan? We didn't plan this or think about it and go, I'm just going to climb up here and you F5 me off the top? Yeah, I, I mean, it has to be discussed. And I don't know. I, I mean, you're looking at two people that are probably very close to Vince McMahon that if they're going to go off script, they probably can't get away with a Brock Lesnar and his boy, storyline-wise at least, Austin Theory. But I, I don't know that you're going to go off script with a spot that big that can injure someone and already screw up your plans for WrestleMania even more. Right. I think also you have Brock and Austin Theory at the end. So it's quite obvious who's going to win that match. So maybe Vince or somebody was like, you know what we should do? Give them a big giant spot so they're not yeah, too disappointed have... with the obvious. Yeah, I thought that and I'm sure we'll get into it, but I hate how they made all the other guys look. Because I feel like if it would have came down to a Seth and Brock or an AJ Styles and Brock, you could have suspend your disbelief for a second that Brock was winning, right? When it was Austin Theory, there was no question. It was just a matter of just kill him already. Let's get this over with, you know? I was very shocked how short both chamber, um, chamber matches were, by the way. Like, I was... The whole pay-per-view, to be honest with you, was extremely short. But when it came down to the two of them, I appreciated the spot because otherwise we knew. We knew what was going to happen. And, and, and I thought they got it over with fast, too, because it's like, why, why keep it going when, when we, know, we, we're, we know the end game here? True. But now the end game for other talent like Seth Rollins, where does that leave him? Like, is it is... I even miss his elimination because it happened so fast. I'm so upset with how they did it. Seth Rollins, somebody that's beaten Brock Lesnar twice, you mean he's going to be dead from one at five? Come on. True. True, true. And, and especially because Rollins had a pretty good match with Roman at Royal Rumble. So we're yeah. thinking, oh, Rollins is probably in second place here. But you're right. Brock broke from his chamber, came out and F5 everybody <laughs> and just beat him. And you're like, I'm very happy about this. I like Brock Lesnar, so I'm very happy about this. But at the same time, if I'm an AJ fan or a Seth Rollins fan or, you know, anybody else, you're like, dude, you just totally Pushed him all yeah, over. you could have given us a little bit of some wrestling here and there between all of them. I'm the, you know, I'm the biggest Brock fan, biggest. and I and I just don't like, um, I don't like how they did the the other guys. And it's because just because Brock is my favorite doesn't mean that I love Seth Rollins or AJ Styles and even Riddle. I've been enjoying Riddle a lot, so I just I just wanted a little bit more. Um, maybe, and, and I heard that that was also off script. Um, Brock escaping the, breaking the pod. Yeah. Because I was like, then maybe Brock wasn't supposed to escape the pot, and that would have been the five-minute or two-minute period where we would have seen some awesome sequences from these guys. We don't know that, you know what I mean? But I just feel like when we went into the chamber, you and I discussed the name value in this chamber match and how good it was going to be, and I do feel it under-delivered when it comes to in-ring. The results, we all knew what was going to happen. 
But the in ring that I was expecting was not there at all. But did I enjoy Beastie killing everyone? Fuck yeah. Right, of course. Exactly. <laughs> Like, I, I can see it from different angles, but I'm just happy that yeah. Brock Lesnar destroyed everybody, and now we're actually going to get champion versus champion, Roman versus Brock at WrestleMania. We'll see how that develops the next few weeks, but let's continue on. The, the women's match, redemption! Bianca Belair wins the match. It's her and Becky Lynch, WrestleMania, and Becky even tweeted this out, and I didn't even think about it. Bianca and Becky are the only two women to ever main event a WrestleMania and win those main event matches, and now they're yeah. fighting each other at WrestleMania. Yeah. I was actually, I didn't see the tweet, but I was actually thinking about that the other day. I was talking with my nephew doing, like, for example, Charlotte's going to go on to be the first one that could possibly main event twice. We'll see how they line up the main events, you know? Um, if they give Charlotte and Ronda night one, that means that Charlotte will be the first one to main event twice. Well, that being Ronda. said... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm running up right. You're right. <laughs> but that being said, um, yeah, this felt slightly predictable. There was a couple of spots in the Women's Chamber match that I like when Rhea and Bianca were working together and kind of like showing off each other's strengths, you know, like, like Bianca's like, look at how strong I am. And Rhea was like, yeah, I can do that too. But I felt like you gave Rhea Ripley a little bit of momentum in that golden match on Monday Night Raw, and it just completely got killed here. But there was one moment where the chamber came down to Alexa, Bianca, and Rhea, where even though I knew Bianca was winning, I would Bianca or Alexa winning the chamber. So I was like, okay, I'm here for a good time now because I don't care who wins. I'm going to be happy with either one of these women facing Becky Lynch. I did like when Bianca and Rhea Ripley are face-to-face, -face, and eventually Ripley was like, she even, you could hear her. She's like, I'm sick of your shit. She's like, you, stop doing that. <laughs> So then she starts, you know, beating up Bianca because these two, we've always seen the, the, seen the, uh, the friendship between these two, uh, a slight rivalry, not a big one yet. That's going to happen probably coming up in the springtime after WrestleMania. But I just am so happy that yeah, Rita got her momentum back up and then Bianca picked up the win here. Yeah, but Bianca continues to be Rhea Ripley's weakness, and that has to be a story that is told eventually. Maybe when Bianca gets the belt back, we can see that feud, because Rhea Ripley's a badass, but she cannot overcome Bianca Belair or Charlotte Flair, for that matter. She does have two weaknesses, but let's keep Rhea and Charlotte away from each other forever, if possible. Please, um, God. I just want to say, speaking of Rhea Ripley, because I just love the fact that these women got special gear made. We didn't have to see them wrestling their oversized t-shirts. Some <laughs> of them look normal. Some of them... Uh, All of them. That I was like, why don't you wrestle like that in the States? Like, like I saw Rhea Ripley and Sonya Deville slate, and they wore gear very similar to what they regularly wear. So yep. it felt normal i love um because live morgan live morgan was just Britney spears gear yes I, I absolutely recognize that as soon as she came out i started singing oops i did it again and then i was with my nephew so i had to explain and then i felt very old uh, but regardless <laughs> <laughs> i i absolutely love that the women came out there looking normal i love what we've done in saudi arabia well not we ww but you know what i mean i love yeah. what they've done with the women and the progression but the one thing that always bothered me was why not try a little bit harder with the outfit um and, and they did that this time where it's just like it, it felt like they belonged there it didn't feel like we're just adding them on like i i give them all the respect for getting the special gear made and managing to look extremely hot sorry i oh, gotta yeah. say it okay extremely hot while wrestling in saudi arabia props to all of them Super, yeah. The only person who didn't have to modify their outfit was Nikki A.S.H. She was the only person who didn't have to change her outfit. That was the first thing I yeah. thought of. Everyone comes out, I'm like, damn, she looks good. Oh, damn, she looks good, too. Oh, there's no oversized t-shirt. This is awesome. Yeah. Oh, there's Nikki. Yeah. Nikki has done nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I'm very, I'm very excited for Bianca and, and Becky, and, and hopefully it is the redemption story that we're all hoping for, and we can build that momentum that Bianca just hasn't been able to get back since SummerSlam. Um, but I will tell you one thing. My favorite match of the night completely exceeded, surpassed my expectations oh God, by what a million. Is it be? Was Lita and Becky. Okay, Holy all right, all right. I, I was nervous that you were going to say Ronda. <laughs> no, no, no. No, but shit. you know what? Um, In case we don't get to talk about that match, because I know we have a lot to talk about, I love Ronda coming out in her um, judo gear. Mm. But mm -mm. I feel no, like I'm the if opposite. You're not, uh, well, that's what I was going to say. I personally yeah. feel like if you're not an old school Ronda Rousey fan, that would have made no sense to you whatsoever. Zero because they have never even They never even mentioned that she's a judo Olympic medalist for the United States. They don't even mention that in WWE, which always shocks me because it's like, why would you capitalize on that? You made Kurt Angle's career out of that, you know? 
But when I saw her come out like that, I popped. And then I was sitting there with my nephew's wife, and she was like, this makes no sense. And I had to explain the entire background story of Ronda Rousey. And that's when I realized, wow, casual viewers are not going to understand why Ronda is out there looking like she just came out of Cobra Kai or something. No. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, I, I wrote I wrote down that uh, that I, she looks like me getting the morning newspaper in my bathrobe. That's that's exactly no, what. That's yes, yes. That's the same outfit. Disrespect. Hey man, <laughs> nobody knows that shit. I don't care. If you wanna, if you want you me to care, make, put, like? do a video. Hold on, do a video package before yes. the match to acknowledge what's gonna happen next is very important to a fan. Not hey, there she right. is in this. I, enjoy it. I'm like, she's what the fuck? I'm telling oh, you. I, on Friday, I, on, I on, Fri- on Friday though, I was like, I was in Toronto with Naomi. I'm in Toronto smiling again. And then she comes out with a goddamn gi. And I'm like, what are you doing? I, no one knows what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. You didn't want to wear, I you didn't want to wear a sexy. Yeah, but nobody, you, nobody knew. Well, she, she didn't want to wear a sexy uh, onesie like everybody else was. So she I, was like, eh, I'll wear I this. Wish, I wish WWE would have saved that moment after telling that story. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I did think Wasted. it was awesome. But at the same time, I felt like there, every once in a while, AW does this a lot where they give you a little Easter egg for people that watch their YouTube content or that watch BTE. At that moment, I feel like Ronda was giving that to people that are legit followers of Ronda Rousey and her career. So I, I personally was like, that shit was for me. Maybe not for you, but it was, it was for, not me. for me. I've known Ronda since, before, since Strike Force, you know? So yeah. I liked that. The one thing that I really did like, and, and that might be a girl thing, is that she came out with a makeup too. I was like, this girl came out to fight. Like, she's here to fuck somebody up. I completely have forgotten about the one arm tie behind her back too. Honestly, I, I, I was sitting with my son watching this match, and I was not interested in, in it at all. I already knew the ending. It, it just like, but like, okay, I knew perfect. the ending of, well, Brock, we I knew the ending of Bianca. But yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I'll be honest. I didn't like that. I didn't like Ronda and Gee. I didn't like that match. Didn't like it at all. I want to see what Sonya has Did to say to like Charlotte Nia? for like, why didn't you come help? Why didn't you come help she me, Charlotte, when you sit she there? Didn't, she didn't even care. I didn't. I hated that so, the match ended and Sonya just went back to Charlotte. Like, like she didn't just screw her over. I was like, okay, yeah, but exactly. I get it. Whatever. You're, it, you're in yeah. power. No, but Sonya's in the power. Sonya could be like, hey, Charlotte, by the way, you're fighting Ronda now in a bear cage match because you're such an asshole. Yeah, That's but right. also but. they've been telling the story that Sonia is about to lose her power, so she might have to be complacent with whatever happens if she doesn't want to lose the power because she's already, you know, yeah. storyline-wise, she's already about to lose that power, so she might have to be behaving herself just so she doesn't lose that power. You know, you can see it both ways. We've already wasted so much time in a match I didn't care about. Let's talk about Becky Lynch versus Lita. Uh, this was, oh my God, uh, this yeah. exceeded expectations. Lita in her 40s is doing more than me in my 30s. And I got to say, congratulations to Lita. And then after, it seemed like it was over. And then they played her music and we got a standing yeah. ovation for Lita. That was unexpected. And I, that made me tear yeah. up a little bit. Yeah, I, I told you, I was like, that match is going to go for like six minutes. I didn't expect her to get, I feel like they finally redeemed Lita. Because even when she main evented Raw with Chris Stratus, that was what, like a seven minute match or something like that. I never seen Lita go one on one on a long singles match. And I just thought they freaking killed it. And there were so many false finishes that I really thought, even though I thought this was the most predictable finish, there was one second that I was like, holy shit, Lita's going to win the title. And she didn't, but I will tell you one thing. That's, if you're a legend and you want to return, that's how you should return. That was amazing. She looked incredible. I was so happy that she made me change my mind and she surpassed my expectations. Yeah, she definitely, um, I think, honestly, if you read the story about Lita, she was not supposed to be here. She it was the Royal Rumble. She got backstage like, hey, you want to wrestle Becky the next month? And I imagine, yeah. I imagine she walked backstage and they were like, hey, you want to wrestle somebody at WrestleMania next month? Yeah, <laughs> and she'd be like, "Uh, I guess." And then it'd be like, "Hey, next month we're gonna be at Backlash. Hey, next month we're gonna be at Money in the Bank. Hey, you're back, just like Edges. Welcome back." Oh shit, I didn't notice. <laughs> but I just, I love the fact that uh, I guess we throw the term dream match around so much, but I do think this was a dream match. You have people like yourself that was watching was watching wrestling forever, right? Oh, yeah. You know about Lita. You have people like myself who idolize Becky, and that's my favorite because I'm a newer watcher. And you have like all of these generations really just wanting to see the old school with the new school. If you're going to do a dream match and return for it, this is how you do it. She looked ready. She didn't look out of place. She looked like she never left, and that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's the best part about it. And I think finally, 
women wrestlers have like now that it's acceptable ha- are using storylines more than using like I have to do these moves I have to do this I have to do that in the ring it's like no the story is can you pull this off because she's younger and you're older that's the story that's it yeah and it worked and it worked out yeah. for all of us so I I expect Lita to honestly to be back as a permanent character just like Edges I think that's going to be the new thing the new thing is we don't need to be wrestling seven days a week we can wrestle once every few months and, and put some because butts in the makes, seats. It, it also makes those matches more special. We do need our full timers that are there all the time. You have programming weekly. But I always talk about that. It's like, why do you get excited for Christmas? Because it's once a year. You have to have some things that you don't see all the time, even in wrestling. Otherwise, it gets boring. That's why I always defend it. For example, Brock Lesnar and people say, he's a five timer. I see him as an attraction. I don't see Brock as a, and maybe I'm biased. But I haven't seen him as a part-timer in a long time. Go back and count how many pay-per-views he's been around. Except for the pandemic era when he was gone for a year. He's there for at least half of the pay-per-views of the year. It's just, he feels like an attraction. And I do think you need that in wrestling to make things feel special. I do. And I know people go back and forth with, do you need to put titles on part-timers? Maybe not. But you do need those attractions. You do. Yes, agreed. So, how did you feel about Goldberg versus Roman Reigns then? (laughs) Oh, God. It was exactly what it needed to be. Um, I, 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 I thought, I thought they did the best that they could with Goldberg, right? But I think it's like it people start admitting that Goldberg is limited. It was, it was four minutes. It was good. It was a good four minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. And I love that Roman didn't put him to sleep with the, with the, with the spear. He, he put the sleeper hold on him, you know, which, which I guess the only one that hit a spear in that match was Goldberg, which his spear is now more of a light tackle, but okay, whatever. <laughs> it was Goldberg, and I thought that was maybe a weird way of paying respect. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like him putting it out with the spear where it just looked like, oh my God, he really did pull this old man out. Where, I don't know, it felt different to just let Goldberg be the one that hit the spear. Or for Roman Reigns to be cocky enough to say, I don't even need to hit your move to beat you. You know, you can see it from both perspectives. But yeah, it wasn't bad. It was good. It, it, it reminded me of when McIntyre fight him too, where it was a short, open the show, let's get it over with. And I have no complaints. If you really think about it, Goldberg hasn't been that bad for a while. His feud with Lashley wasn't horrible. No, his, I think his feud was Lashley kind of rejuvenated him. But though the storyline, I didn't even know there really was a storyline. It just seemed like I want to beat you with the title. Suddenly those packages that aired before it was like, yeah, I'm Goldberg and things haven't been working out for me lately, but I feel better now. <laughs> so I'm going to win tonight. That, I was like, wait, there's a storyline? What? Yeah, I didn't, you know what? I didn't even really know. Wait. What really upset me about this is that your storyline should have been you were supposed to face me at WrestleMania two years ago and you ran away from yeah. being scared. That's it. That's all you needed to do to build this match. Like, make Roman sound like Roman left because he was scared of Goldberg. Like, you didn't need the things are not working out for me anymore. You didn't need I'm going to put this old man out. They had a story. And I told people, I'm like, I don't like Goldberg, but we're going to get this match whether we like it or not because we were supposed to. So let's just get it over with in Saudi Arabia. Why not? Roman needs something to do and more more names to add to his list. Yeah. Yeah. I also... You know, that was a good match, but you know what I would hate? And I know people are upset about it, but what I would hate is, hey, Usos and Viking Raiders, we need to fly all the way to Saudi Arabia. Uh-huh. Uh, oh all right. You're, you're going to have a match. Oh, cool. No, you're not, actually. <laughs> you come down the aisle, and you just get attacked. And they're like, all right, get back on the plane, assholes. We got to go to Raw SmackDown next week. Like, oh, damn. You got to feel bad for them. I don't care. I was so happy it happened. At the time of the pay-per-view, I was like, please, just get to the main event. I, it's, it's noon where I live. I have children. They want the TV back. They want to watch Encanto and Moana. Well, you want to know something? Are you ready to laugh? Because you're like, okay, I got kids and everything. I went to an Airbnb the night before, right? And I was like, okay, if we check out at the time we're supposed to check out, I can watch the pay-per-view on the car while we drive back. And then I'll do, because I was doing Wrestling Inc., right? I was speeding because I didn't realize this pay-per-view was going to end so fast. I was like, I don't have enough time. Let's stop to get some lunch and everything. Next thing I know, the Uso, that that match don't happen. And I'm like, Holy shit, I got 20 minutes to make it, get my setup ready, and get ready oh, yeah. to screen because this pay per view is ending. If, if the chamber had not had entrances, I'm telling you, I would have to bail on the podcast because I, I would not make it because yeah. of that. But at the same time, I wasn't upset. Outside of being in a hurry, I wasn't upset. Nobody wanted to see that match. That match had no build. I'm okay with what happened. Yep, same. Same. I, you know. And then, of course, you had Misery and Mysteria, which I didn't watch the kickoff show. 
So I'm like, oh my God, we still have the Miz and Rey Mysterio. And then, oh, and, then they, and then they show you a clip of what happened earlier. I was like, thank the wrestling gods that that match happened earlier. You were, oh. you were depressed, weren't you? You were like, I have to see what happened in this match. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt. Um, though the rumor online kept popping up was like, don't you know Cody Rhodes is on a plane heading to Saudi Arabia? Oh so my I'm like, god, because somebody poorly photoshopped a picture. Oh my god, it was fun. And so I'm like, what the fuck? Because I was standing off Twitter because I was just, you know, I was hanging with my family watching this. So I was just trying to enjoy the, my family time. And I'm like, please, God, don't tell me I just spoiled myself by actually opening my phone. So I just closed my phone. I'm like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Whatever. I, I'm fine. <laughs> well, it didn't happen because it was fake. But he was spotted in Orlando, supposedly. Uh, you know, whatever. You know, guess what? Disney's there. <laughs> and people, that's like the number one capital to go on tourism in America. Probably the world. So, uh Everyone's probably in Orlando at some point going to Disney. He or... also posted in his story, this is what retirement looks like. But we all know Cody's a troll. He posted that he was in St. Louis the day of the Rumble. So I don't trust Cody Rhodes in his social media. No, I don't either. But uh, all in all, <laughs> I, you know, I, I got to give Elimination Chamber a thumbs up. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Nothing. Uh, I think people are getting so upset about wrestling lately that they stopped, they stopped enjoying it and just... And just, just I don't know. They just it's look like, for what to hate. Yeah. It's like their family member. It's like, no, they're not your family. Like, this is the TV show. If they lose, it's not like, oh, they should have given my friend Alexa Bliss the win over, uh, over Bianca Belay. What an asshole. Oh, my God. Calm down. Calm down, man. Yeah. Calm down. <laughs> not, they're not your friends. <laughs> I, think that, I think the one person that hurt there, like, going back to that match, is Liv Morgan. Like, I cannot believe that this is her big moment anymore. Like, she makes every match seem like this is gonna be her big moment if she never wins. I know. At this point, they I need know. to, like, reset her or do something different with her because it's all, oh my god, I'm finally gonna get my opportunity. You got your opportunity, sis. Like, four times now, you lost. So, I what know. are you gonna do now? <laughs> she's on a losing streak. She's on a, she's lost to Dewdrop. She lost in Rhea Ripley. She lost in the Chamber. She lost even before that. It's like, I like Liv Morgan a lot, but at the same time, I don't know if how we feel is how the people are in charge feel about her. They're like, yeah, yeah, they cheer you. Yeah, like, oh, well, yeah, but there's like an undercurrent of, of fandom that's building. It's like, eh, no, nah, we don't really think so. Oh, okay, yeah. well, there you go. Um, yeah, we'll have to see what happens with the next, but I don't see... WrestleMania is not going to... She's not going to have a, a one-on-one match at WrestleMania. She's going to be involved in some multi-woman match, tag team, women's tag team titles probably. Liv Morgan and somebody. Yeah, agree. Agree. Maybe Rhea Ripley, which I hope doesn't happen to her, but I hope she escapes all that. We and... have time to talk about the amazing video package for The Undertaker being inducted into the Hall of Fame. You have, we have one minute. Uh, yes, <laughs> that, was, that was very nice. But if you actually watch yeah. Chamber, they played like five of those different videos that lasted like seven minutes each. And I'm like, what the fuck's yeah, going you know, on? Yeah, they stole a lot. They stole a lot, which is why I think the Usos and the Viking Raiders was never meant to happen. Because I was telling people, if that match was meant to happen, they had time. So they were stolen with a lot of video packages. Therefore, I don't think that match, that really was the booking was for them, for the match to never happen. Yeah. No, I think it's awesome. We'll talk about it more later, but I got to go. But yep. thank you so much for talking about Limited Chamber with me. So it was a lot of fun. Remember, folks, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Steve Fall and follow Isa on Twitter as well and Instagram and OnlyFans and oh, ChristianMingle.com. <laughs> folks, we're done here. <laughs> Have a good one. We end the show with the same time, same way we do every day. And how do we do? Adios. Adios.